Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Steffis King Entrepreneurship, a place for future successful entrepreneurs. Today, we dive into a topic that is critical, yet often overlooked. Public speaking. Whether you're pitching an idea to potential investors, addressing your team, or sharing your entrepreneurial journey at a conference, your ability to communicate effectively can make or break your success. Public speaking is not just about standing in front of a crowd and talking. It's about engaging your audience, conveying your message clearly, and inspiring action. It's about confidence, clarity, and connection. For entrepreneurs, mastering public speaking is as vital as understanding your market or managing your finances. But fear not, like any other skill, public speaking can be learned, practiced, and mastered. And that's precisely what we're here for. So buckle up, let's embark on this journey together. Now, let's unravel the process of becoming a great public speaker. The first step in becoming a successful public speaker is overcoming fear. Fear is a powerful emotion. It can freeze us in our tracks, silence our voices, and cloud our minds. In the realm of public speaking, fear often rears its head in the form of stage fright, fear of judgment, or the fear of forgetting our lines. But fear, my friends, is not the enemy. It's a signal that we care about doing well, a sign that we are stepping out of our comfort zone and growing. So how do we combat these fears? Let's dive in. The fear of public speaking, or glossophobia, is one of the most common fears around. It's that butterfly in the stomach feeling we get before stepping onto a stage. The best way to combat this? Practice. Stand in front of a mirror, look yourself in the eye and deliver your speech. The more you practice, the more familiar you become with your content, the less room there is for fear to creep in. Next, the fear of being judged. This fear often stems from a lack of confidence or self-esteem. Remember, everyone makes mistakes. It's how we learn and grow. The audience understands this too. They're not there to judge you, but to learn from you. So instead of focusing on the possibility of negative feedback, concentrate on delivering a message that's worth listening to. And finally, the fear of forgetting what to say. This is where preparation comes into play. Know your material inside and out. Use visual cues or notes if necessary. And if you do lose your train of thought, take a moment, breathe, and pick up from where you left off. It's not about perfection, but connection. Overcoming fear isn't about eliminating it completely, but learning to manage it. It's about harnessing that adrenaline rush and using it to fuel your performance. It's about transforming fear from a barrier into a stepping stone towards success. Remember, fear only prevents you from reaching your full potential. The second step is preparation. Preparation breeds confidence. Delving into the art of preparation, one cannot underestimate the power it holds in public speaking. Imagine stepping onto a stage, the spotlight is on you, and you're about to deliver a speech. The difference between leaving the audience spellbound or having them check their watches lies in your preparation. Knowing your audience is the first step in this art. Think of it like this. You wouldn't serve steak at a vegan dinner party, would you? Similarly, your speech should cater to the interests, knowledge level, and expectations of your audience. Understanding who you're speaking to allows you to craft a message that resonates, rather than simply relaying information. Next comes the foundation of your speech. Research. In-depth research on your chosen topic not only equips you with facts, figures, and anecdotes, but also helps you anticipate possible questions and objections. The more you know, the more confident you'll feel. Remember, an audience can sense uncertainty. Your knowledge on the topic at hand can be your shield against that. But all the knowledge in the world won't help if you can't communicate it effectively. Here's where practice comes into play. Think of it as a rehearsal before the grand performance. You must get comfortable with the words, experiment with different tones and rhythms, and learn to navigate the ebb and flow of your speech. Practice in front of a mirror, record yourself, or better yet, present it to a trusted friend or colleague. They can offer you valuable feedback that can fine-tune your delivery. In essence, preparation is much like a backstage crew in a theater. It's unseen, yet it's what holds the entire performance together. It's your secret weapon to combating stage fright, it's your safety net that catches you when you stumble, and it's your roadmap to delivering a successful speech. Preparation is not just about getting the facts right, it's about delivering them in a way that resonates with your audience. Scene script. Step three is all about body language and voice modulation. Let's dive in, shall we? 
Picture the scene. You're in a room and someone is speaking. They're static, their voice monotonous. How long before you lose interest? Not very, right? That's because body language and voice modulation are the spices of public speaking. They add flavor, depth, and color to your words. So what do we mean by body language? It's not just about standing straight or avoiding slouching. It's about using your entire body as a tool to communicate your message. Let's start with eye contact. Maintaining eye contact with your audience is like building a bridge of connection. It shows you're engaged, you're present, and you're speaking directly to them. But don't stare. That can feel intimidating. Instead, aim for soft, inclusive eye contact that makes your audience feel seen and involved. Now let's talk about hand gestures. They're the punctuation marks of your speech. They can emphasize a point, illustrate an idea, or simply break up the rhythm to keep things interesting. But remember, less is more. Overdoing it can distract from your message. Finally, we come to voice modulation. This is your volume control, your tone, your pace. It's how fast or slow you speak, how loud or soft, how high or low. Modulating your voice effectively can make your speech more engaging. Think of it like music. A monotone speech is like a song with just one note. But a speech with voice modulation, that's a symphony. It has highs and lows, moments of intensity, and moments of calm. So practice changing your pace, varying your volume, emphasizing certain words. Play around with it. See what works for you. That's it, folks. Just remember, public speaking is like a dance. It's not just about the words you say, but how you say them. It's about your body language, your eye contact, your hand gestures, and your voice modulation. Mastering your body language and voice modulation can make your speech more engaging and memorable. And that's a powerful tool to have in your public speaking toolbox. The final step in becoming a great public speaker is embracing feedback and continuous improvement. Imagine you've just delivered a speech. You're feeling good about it, but there's a nagging question at the back of your mind. How did I do? This is where feedback comes into play. Feedback, whether it's from your audience, a coach, or even yourself, is the most effective way to gauge your performance. It's like a mirror that reflects back your strengths and weaknesses. Now let's talk about constructive criticism. This is feedback that is specifically designed to help you improve. It's not about pointing out flaws for the sake of it, but rather it's about identifying areas where you can grow and develop. Constructive criticism is a gift, and like all gifts, it should be received gracefully. Remember, the goal isn't to be perfect, it's to get better. Learning from past performances is another crucial part of the feedback process. Reviewing your speeches, perhaps by watching recordings, can be incredibly enlightening. You might notice a pattern in your gestures, or perhaps a certain pitch that you tend to overuse. Recognizing these patterns is the first step to breaking them. But feedback and learning aren't enough on their own. They must be paired with continuous improvement. This means actively applying what you've learned to your future performances. It means practicing new techniques, experimenting with different styles, and constantly pushing your boundaries. Improvement isn't a one-time thing. It's a never-ending journey of growth and exploration. In this journey, you might stumble, you might falter, but that's okay. Each stumble is a learning opportunity, and each falter is a chance to get back up stronger. So don't be afraid to make mistakes, and most importantly, don't be afraid to learn from them. Remember, becoming a great public speaker is a process, not a destination. Continue to seek feedback, learn from your past, and strive for continuous improvement. And before you know it, you'll be standing on that stage, captivating your audience with your words and your presence. Subscribe to Steph is King Entrepreneurship for more videos, and until next time. To summarize, mastering public speaking involves overcoming fear, preparing thoroughly, controlling your body language and voice, and embracing feedback. As we've journeyed through this process, we've uncovered that the first step towards conquering the stage is tackling the fear that holds us back. By shifting our mindset, we can turn this fear into our fuel. Next, we delved into the art of preparation, highlighting that diligent planning and rehearsing are integral to delivering a captivating speech. We emphasized the importance of knowing your audience, understanding their needs, and tailoring your message to resonate with them. In the realm of body language and voice modulation, we discovered how these silent communicators can significantly enhance or detract from our message. We learn to use these tools effectively to engage and captivate our audience. 
Lastly, we stress the value of feedback, a golden opportunity for growth and improvement. By actively seeking and implementing constructive criticism, we can continually enhance our public speaking skills. Subscribe to Steph is King Entrepreneurship for more videos and until next time.